So let me show you a situation that you could analyze before. I mean, we probably wouldn't have because it's kind of trivial. But um, so this is the setup for the situation that I wanted to demonstrate. Um, it's, um, <coughs> it's a ladder leaning on a wall. So, um, so this, I think I meant this to be my carpenter. Uh, let me put that over there. This is my ladder. Uh, let me just uh, lean it against the wall. All right. Ah, all right. Wait. It's always, e all right, I think, uh, wait, doesn't work yet. All right, uh, I'm going to pause it and do it properly. Um, it's hard to drag it because it's, you know, fuss controls. That's all that, what the, okay. When I make the ladder lean, um, oops, don't dig into anything. All right, it leans, right? That's a ladder that you have seen. And um, here's something interesting. So, you know, if we were to analyze this ladder, um, what you have done, would you have done is, um, all right, there's gravity pulling it down. There's no more force pushing it up. That force is equal to zero. It's at equilibrium, right? And, um, and you know, that explains why it's not moving. Now, let me change the situation ever so slightly. I'm going to, you know, pause the simulation for a bit. I'm going to lean the ladder at a slightly different angle. So as in, you know, I haven't changed much. I'm just going to lean it at a slightly different angle. And you know, let me drop it gently the same way I did it last time and see what happens. This time the ladder slides away. So what made a difference? Why didn't this ladder when I play oops, uh, why didn't this ladder when I place this here? This didn't slide away. It oops, oh, okay, this time it does. Um, yeah, I think it's right at the thing. Okay. When I place the ladder this way, this doesn't slide, but the other one does. Any ideas? So there's a friction, but um, when we looked at static friction, this is what we said about static friction, right? That its maximum value is given by the normal force. Um, between this, and the other scenario, do you think static friction changed a lot? I mean, do you think normal force changed a lot? I mean, normal force, here, if, you know, your intuition should say this is, normal force is approximately mg, because normal force is what's balancing out the gravity. And between this position, let me slowly slide it to the other position. Between that and this position, when I let go, the the only thing that has changed is the orientation of the ladder. And somehow that made a big enough of a difference that um, it doesn't slide here. But when I pull this out a little bit and let it go from rest, now it'll slide. So this is a change to the way we have been doing things. So, so far, if I wanted to analyze this situation, this is what I would have done. I would have drawn free body diagram, and I want to draw it as simple as possible. So I would have said, all right, I represent my ladder with a dot. So I do say, all right, here's the dot, and um, um, there's a gravity pulling it down, mg. There's no more force pushing it up. And I would just say, all right, looking at them, you know what? I think a net force is equal to zero, right? So far, everything looks good. And if you remember my rule about drawing forces on free body diagram, I try not to draw any force that I don't see a need to draw, right? So here, I see this, well, net force is equal to zero. And my criterion for static equilibrium says net force is equal to zero. I see nothing wrong with it. I'm done. And if that was my approach, then it will greatly puzzle me when I pull this out a little bit. Like, should anything in the diagram change? Yeah. Like, what, what should I change? Is the weight not mg anymore? No, you're changing the angle. I'm changing the angle, but it does anything in the diagram represent the angle. Mm -hmm. mg is still pointing directly downward, right? Yeah. 
and normal force will still di pull it directly apart. But something has changed. Something has changed en enough that when I let go, now it slides. So, so this is going to be a change in way that we do things. So one, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, that for the static equilibrium condition, in addition to saying net force is equal to zero, we are going to say, in addition to that, we also have to say net torque is equal to zero. This seems intuitive enough. Like that's what we are dealing with so far, right? We say net torque is equal to zero. What that means is angular acceleration will also be equal to zero. Yeah. So in this situation, um, this is how we have to, uh, so now it's because when you look at torque, torque depends on where you are applying the force. Right? Yeah? So my question is, um, where is the surface in the normal, that tells you the normal, but the straight down, we don't use the wall. Yeah, so that's what I'm getting to right now. So, so far, we didn't really care where the force was applied. If I have this cart, which is sitting here, then all that mattered for normal force is that it's upward force somewhere on this object. Gravity, all that matters is it's downward force somewhere on this object. And that's why I represent all my objects with a single dot, because I didn't care where the force was on, as long as it was somewhere on the object. That's gonna change now. We now care where on the object that the force is. So uh, what that means is that this diagram doesn't work for my free body diagram anymore. Uh, let me draw my free body diagram. I mean, I'll still try to draw my free body diagram reasonably simple, but this is how I'm gonna have to do things. I'm going to have to have some kind of representation of the object itself. So I'll say, all right, this is going to be my free body diagram. So it still doesn't change the fact that there's gravity acting on this thing. And I'll justify this a little bit later. I'm going to say gravity is at the center of mass. So, I mean, it's not technically true. Force of gravity is spread all over, but mathematically, I'm going to treat it as if uh, all those different forces of gravity, that when I average all their effects, that it says so they all act at a single point, the center of mass that we've been talking about last time, which is why I had to introduce it, it's acting at the center of mass downward, mg. Everyone okay with that so far? So Ranjit, you are asking where is the normal force, right? Where is the contact force at? So um, before I was talking about the normal force um, from the floor, that's why it was pointing upward. Well, where's the normal force here? Uh, uh, um, I'm, there's normal force from the floor alone. Like at, what's the only point where the normal force can be? The point of contact, right? That's the only point where the normal force can be. So this is where the normal force is. Now, as you look at this diagram, now you should see the, um, see the question that whose answer to the which is now different. So we are to, so this is static equilibrium. So the question that we continue to ask is net force equal to zero and is net torque equal to zero? Di this diagram, can net force be equal to zero? Right? Downward, upward, they can balance out. Here's the question. Can net torque be equal to zero? Look at these two forces. Do they look like they are spinning the thing you know, in two opposite directions, one clockwise, one counterclockwise? Or do they look like they are trying to spin the thing in the same direction? Um, it might be easier if I define some kind of center of rotation like the point around which it's ro doing the rotating. Let me give you two different points, or actually three different points, and hopefully the answer to all three will be the same. Um, I can imagine taking this and making it rotate about this point. What direction is gravity trying to make it spin? Is it making it try to spin at all? No, because here this delta x is equal to zero. So, all right, it's not making it trying to make it spin at all? Oh wait, wait, I have, shouldn't erase it. So I'm done with the gravity. What about the normal force? What direction? Not up, 
with the direction of torque, I want to talk about in terms of counterclockwise and clockwise. Yeah, counterclockwise is going to try to make it rotate counterclockwise. So, all right. So, the combination of these two is that they are going to try to make this object spin counterclockwise. But, you know, maybe you don't say, you don't agree with my choice of where the center of rotation is. Maybe it's uh, actually rotating about this con contact point here. All right, so normal force in the case won't be making it rotate. What direction is gravity making it rotate? Counterclockwise, right? Let me do one more. So all right, we are done with the normal force and gravity. Let's say I just pick a random point. I just pick a random point here, for example. Uh, combination of gravity and normal force, what direction is it making it trying to rotate? Counterclockwise. So it almost doesn't matter, at least in this case, where I pick. The combination of these two is that it's going to try to make it spin counterclockwise. So that's where you run across the difficulty here. Um, the forces that we have drawn so far um, is not enough. I have to introduce additional forces so that this uh, static equilibrium condition holds. OK, where can I find my forces, which is going to make this rotate clockwise? And let's uh, make it simple for me. Um, let's say this is going to be my center of rotation. So I want something, some force that will generate torque that's going to balance out this torque. Yeah, where are the ladder is touching wall? I mean, you hopefully had this intuition already. The ladder is leaning on the wall. There's got to be a normal force from the wall. And well, this is why. There has to be normal force from the wall to balance out the torque due to gravity. So let's say there's a normal force from the wall. OK, so with all these three forces combined, you can see that, um, you can see that um, Net torque can add up to zero, right? Now, I ask this question every single time. This is an iterative process. After I draw the force, I ask myself both questions again. Can net force be equal to zero? And can net torque be equal to zero? Net torque can be equal to zero. That was the whole point. Can net force be equal to zero? No. What are, what are, OK. Why can net force be equal to zero? Like, uh, so in the vertical direction, do you have any problem with the vertical direction? No, right? So what's the problem with the horizontal direction right now? Yeah, you need some kind of force that's pushing it to the left, right? You have a force that's pushing it to right. Unless you have a left toward the force, your net force, which is a vector quantity, won't be zero. So where do you think you can get a left toward the force here? No, that force is on the wall, not on the ladder. I want a force on the ladder. Uh, downward, not horizontal. Friction. Friction, yeah. So in this example, it's actually important that the floor and the ladder has friction. So the last force you need here is the force of friction pushing it this way. So. Um, so this is the picture that allows a static equilibrium condition to hold. And what you saw with the other example, when I push this ladder slightly, somehow things have shifted enough that it's causing this um, friction to not provide enough force and slide. So um, before we go into break, let me just change one thing here and see that friction matters. Let me change the property of this ladder, material property. It right now has friction of 0 0.2. Let's make it 0. Um, but before I do that, let me pause the f simulation. And I'm going to make it so that uh, friction is now zero. So it's a frictionless thing between the ladder and the floor. And when I now run the simulation, now it slides. Because now there's no friction, so it must slide. 